Hi there, welcome to the lab. Today we're going to have a look at what should be an Aneng AN101 uh, multimeter. I uh, ordered this multimeter from AliExpress as part of my under $10 multimeter series. I'd just like to add or ask that if you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Questions and comments are always very welcome. The feedback is appreciated and it helps me figure out where to focus my activity. In particular, I'm doing this under $10 multimeter series because people have asked me to have a look at some less expensive multimeters. In the package, good bubble wrap here, there is a case. That's everything in the bubble wraps. So there's a little plastic hard case and this opens up. I guess maybe it should have opened up a different way, not come apart. Uh, so there's the multimeter and a set of very slim probes. And so this is a very slim style. Oh, it's getting this out. How does this come out? Okay, so that's the probes out. Oh, I see, this latch holds it in. And so this is a very slim meter, so it's slimmer than normal. And the probes are not standard probes. Yeah, so these are not standard probes. I'll have to see if we can fit regular banana jacks in here. And it doesn't look like there's any battery in here, so I'll have to get the batteries in there as well. So let me figure out what kind of batteries I need to put in here. This takes a standard CR2032 battery and it does say that down here. So I've got a CR2032 battery in there and I'll put the cover on and one thing to note is that this uh, spot here does not have any sort of a threaded ring here the screw is drilling directly into the plastic, so it's a, it's a self-tapping screw, which means we have to try to not generate more wear and tear on that spot than possible. Okay, so I've got the battery in. Coming back to the case for a second, I did manage to slot the case back together so it wasn't broken in shipping or anything like that. Uh, you can see that the unit fits into the case like so and there's some space for the probes at the side over here as they were when I opened it up. And there's also a little stand here and I think that stand is meant to hold the meter like that uh, except when the probes are in, I guess that can work like so. So it does provide a little bit of a stand since there is no stand built into the meter itself. So I can turn it on just by dialing the switch. So that's, it beeps as we change modes and this meter has a whole bunch of functions and so we'll go through them as much as possible. The one thing I will mention is that uh, standard banana jacks will go into the holes here, but uh, standard multimeter probes will not. Most multimeter probes have this additional extra protective sheath and that won't work take a standard banana jack, it'll slide in, but then we'll have a little bit of exposed uh, area here. And so because of that, um, well, you'd have to use this probe to prevent having any exposed metal bits here. Uh, so I wouldn't use this in a Cat 2 or a Cat 3 setting with, a, with the banana jack. Uh, where that's exposed.
Starting with DC voltage, I haven't connected the reference source yet, and so the meter is in millivolt uh, range by default, and so it's picking up a lot of noise. I'm going to connect the probe now. And so now you can see it's very steady, uh, zero millivolts, no volts here. Now let's bring that up to a tenth of a volt. And so a tenth of a volt is 100 millivolts. That's actually a pretty good reading, 99.8 millivolts. Three tenths, once again, an excellent reading. I'm now going to go up to a full volt. And it has to, I guess it won't automatically range there, so I'll put it into the volt range, and that's a fantastically accurate reading. Let's go up to 5 volts. And so I had to once again range it, but other than that, uh, showing 4.99, that's pretty much accurate. Uh, now we'll go up to 10 volts. 9.99, also a, a very accurate, uh, a very good reading. Now millivolts, I've got the meter in the millivolt range, reference source set for millivolts, and we'll just bring that up to one millivolt, one millivolt on the meter, 10 millivolts, 10 millivolts on the meter. Look at that, that's fantastic. 20 millivolts, 20 on the meter. I'm not sure how high this goes. We'll go to 100. 100 millivolts, 100. 0.1, 0.2, that's still a really, really good showing. Uh, so millivolts work very well as well. For AC volts, I use the Fluke as a comparison. And right now uh, it's connected, but the power's not on. And so we're seeing ghost voltage on both, but we're pretty much seeing the same level of ghost voltage. Now I'm going to turn the power on. And we're seeing almost exactly the same voltage on the Fluke as we are seeing on the little n -eng. So that's a, that's a really nice, really nice performance for the n -eng for AC volts. It might just be a touch slower to perform, but really nothing to, to be concerned about. Very good showing. Resistance, the reference source is set up here and I'll connect them. The meter is in resistance mode. And it takes a minute, 20 ohms here, pretty much 20 ohms there. We'll increase that to 100 ohms, pretty much the same reading there. 500 ohms, this is switched, it's showing 0.498 kilo ohms, basically the same thing. I think that's a good reading. We'll go up to 1K. I would think once again, I think that's a very good reading. And one last one, we'll go up to 2K. Another very good reading uh, off by uh, just a small number of ohms. Very, very, very good reading. For capacitance, I have this board with some uh, calibrated values or measured values, and we'll just go through these. The meter is in capacitance mode. So this is 100 picofarads. That's a pretty good showing. This is 1 nanofarad. Pretty good showing there. 10 nanofarads. Reasonable. A hundred nanofarads. It's also fairly reasonable. A thousand nanofarads. A little low, but comparable to what some other meters do. And the last one here is ten microfarads. Once again, a pretty reasonable reading, all things considered. For diode check, I have this test box and we get a good reading here, a good reading here, although no tone. This meter, uh, this LED lights up, 
this LED lights up in a good reading, this one lights in a good reading, but for these higher voltage diodes, we don't get any reading, and uh, we do get a good reading on the short, but once again, no solid tone. And so it seems that we're limited in the range of diodes that we're able to uh, test with this meter. Uh, probably the limited, the voltage is limited probably about two volts. For continuity, I'm just going to do the standard tapping of the probes. Hopefully you can hear the, uh, the beeper. That performance is pretty good. Now normally I would try the gold-plated probes as well, but since I can't plug any other probes in here, I'm not going to be able to perform that test. But still, I think a pretty, pretty solid performance for the uh, continuity. DC milliamps, we can access that here on the multimeter. And I'll now plug in the reference source. It's showing four milliamps. That's almost four milliamps. Dead on, that's very good. Seven milliamps, still very good. 8 milliamps, very good reading. So I think that's really, really nice performance in the uh, milliamp range. For frequency, the reference source is set to 0.1 kilohertz or 100 hertz. The meter is set in uh, frequency mode to measure hertz. I'm plugging in the reference and nothing is showing up here and I can't range it, so that's not making a difference. The meter is not dead or anything. So it doesn't seem to be able to measure uh, frequency, as far as I can tell. And I have tried the reference source with another meter. Uh, other meter is picking up the output just fine, so something odd with the ability to measure frequency on this unit. For non-contact voltage, I usually test that by bringing this cord set into uh, proximity to the sensor. Now the hot line is along this edge, and we'll just put this into non-contact mode. It shows EF for electrical field, and if I bring this along here, can see that it's starting to sense out there. And uh, that's really good performance for non-contact voltage. That's very good performance, if not excellent performance for non-contact voltage with this unit. Quick look inside the unit. There's barely anything to see here. We got the inputs for the probes. This is where the battery goes. Amazingly enough, there's a PTC, which suggests there might be a little bit of protection here. Uh, we've got the speaker there. The control chip is completely opaque to us. It's been obscured, so we'll never know what's in there. Um, there are some contacts for some other items that are not installed on the board. Uh, there might be some variations on this, or maybe that's why the frequency mode doesn't work, because those components aren't installed. So it's ex an extremely basic unit. Everything is controlled from the uh, controller chip, which we can't get any visibility into, and uh, not a lot to see. In summary, this is a nice little meter that performs almost all the basic measurements. With the exception of frequency, all the other modes work quite well. It is decently accurate for a meter that you are probably not getting for its accuracy. Non-contact voltage is excellent and rivals many larger, more expensive meters. It does have a milliamp range, but no amp range. Diode check is functional, but a little limited. As I mentioned before, 
I was not able to make frequency measurements work. For troubleshooting around the house, this would be a perfectly fine meter. Its small size and the included case means that it would be easy to carry around in a pocket or pouch. Exercise caution if using this to measure mains connected circuits as the protection circuitry is somewhat limited. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and until next time.